Hi, Lee Ellis here with another installment of Leading with Honor Coaching. Now, if you caught the last installment, you know I talked about Colonel Dick O'Grady as being one of those great leaders that had recently passed away, flown west, as we say in the Air Force. And I mentioned there were two. The other one was Colonel Don Ellis, and today I'm going to talk about him. Now, Colonel Don Ellis is not related to me. I wish we were, but he was my boss twice, my peer for a while, and my friend for more than 40 years. A wonderful guy and a great leader. You know, he was a legendary football player in the Southwest Conference at Texas A&M in the old days when there was a Southwest Conference. He also coached football at the Air Force Academy. He was quite an individual, naturally talented in so many ways, but he also had, like Dick O'Grady, great character, great courage, and great commitment to do the right thing. That was the kind of guy he was. And like O'Grady, he was consistent, consistent, consistent to live out what he talked about and the values that he stood for in, in, in his talk. He walked that talk. And that was such a great example for me and so many others. Well, one of the unique things about Colonel Don Ellis, I met him in 73, 1973. I'd just come home from the war. The Air Force offered me the opportunity to go back into flying. And I said, absolutely. So I went to San Antonio, Texas, to Randolph Air Force Base. Colonel Don Ellis had just had this big thing dropped in his lap, was we're going to requalify the former POWs who have been there five, six, seven, eight years. We're going to requalify them for flying. Nobody had ever done this before. But Colonel Don Ellis, is, he loved a challenge, and this was just part of life for him. He took that on. And one of the key characteristics that Colonel Don Ellis had was the ability to pick the right people and put the right people in responsible for a job and delegate and get out of the way and let them do it well. And that's what he picked. He picked a captain, a flight commander, Colonel, Captain Ron Helsel, and the two of them collaborated uh, along with many others, but the two of them really collaborated to build out this program of requalification, flying and ground school and everything that was involved to get us back in the air and get us certified again as pilots. And for most people that took two to four months. For me, it was three months. I had the least amount of flying time probably of anybody in the program. And it took, I think it took me 33 hours of flying time to get requalified in the T-38 and ready to go on with my flying career. That was an exciting time. But I watched, I actually flew with Colonel Ellis several times. I watched him operate and I was so impressed with the fact that one, he was creative in that he took on something new, put the right people in place. He had a vision for it and he communicated that vision and got support from everybody in the squadron. But he also had to work up because this was a new thing and he had to keep everybody above him happy with what he was doing as well. The thing that I saw in him also was this uh, collaborative nature. Now, he could be very direct. He could be uh, demanding, but he was also fun, caring, always a big smile. And the collaborative nature in him wanted to help people succeed, just like Colonel Dick O'Grady. He wanted people to be successful, and he would support them to help them be successful. He would encourage them. He had that positive attitude and that collaborative nature. He wanted to know what was going on, but he also stayed out and let people operate and manage things within their own capabilities. That was a real example for me. I like the fact that just like Colonel O'Grady, he had this paradox of being able to be very caring, very compassionate, fun, outgoing, and yet tough and could confront anybody up or down. And both of these guys had that characteristics. And the one thing you knew about them was what you saw was what you got. They were real. They were authentic. They were the same person behind the door, on the outside, in secret. There was no secret. They were the same. And that's the kind of person I wanted to be. I think that people are really attracted to leaders like that. That's the legacy I think they left for me and so many others around uh, them. Uh, Don Ellis was uh, just a fun guy to be with. We went to reunions together for many, many years, even as recent as three or four years ago. He was still coming to our Operation Homecoming reunion. 
Don Ellis' legacy is there at Randolph Air Force Base in Hangar 12. If you go there, you'll see Freedom Hall. And you walk down Freedom Hall, the whole story of the Operation Homecoming requalification program is there for you to see. And I'd encourage you to go see that. I had the opportunity to serve in that squadron uh, three times. The first time, Operation Homecoming. The second time, Colonel Don Ellis was still there when I came back a couple of years later. As a, he was still their squadron commander, and I was a flight commander and a section commander. And then the third time, I was there, Colonel Dick O'Grady was the squadron commander, and then I took over for him. So both these guys I've mentioned, it just occurred to me, we all were commanders of the Cheetah Squadron, the 560th at Randolph Air Force Base, and we all were there to walk the halls of Freedom Hall and see the legacy of the POWs coming back in requalification, but also to see the legacy of Don Ellis and Dick O'Grady. These were great men, great leaders, and left a great legacy. We miss them, but we will not forget them. Their legacy of leadership and character and courage lives on in all of us who knew them. Please join us again next month and check out the blog, the written blog, that will have more insights on these two great leaders.